Hi, and welcome back to Bubble Shop's YouTube channel. I'm joined by Glenn and he's gonna tell us how to correctly survey a property with scope to install an air source heat pump in a retrofit project. But firstly, who should be watching this video? So if you're just coming into the industry, whether you've been installing biomass previously, or you've been installing any other renewable technology, and you're trying to find out the best methods to do a heat loss on a property and size the equipment, then this video is going to teach you the basic principle of what you need to be doing when you go into a property and what data we need to be collecting and how to collect it in order to design and ultimately price a job effectively. So we've got our property and we've got our appointment to go and do our survey. What equipment should we be taking with us? So you're really going to need a measure of some sort. Now you can do this the old fashioned way of a tape measure, although if you want to speed things up a bit, a standard laser measure is best code of practice. Uh, you really need to have yourself an up-to-date survey form. Now these can be downloaded from online and some MCS sizing software do have um, their own version of which you can have. Um, Bubble Shop has quite a thorough one, what we feel over experience and time now to be the best method for data collection. So you're more than welcome to get in contact and we can send some forms out to you. Brilliant, so we've got all our equipment. What are the first things we should be finding out about the property or the important information? So really important and probably some questions that you can qualify on the phone before going out there is, is it a listed property? Is it in a conservation area? The type of fuel source that they currently have in the property. If they haven't got a heating system at all, if it's direct electric, we're going to have to put a new wet system throughout. So it's very important to understand that before going out to the property because it's going to have an implication on time on site and also the cost of the job. The other things you want to be looking at is, is it a cavity wall property? If it's got cavity wall insulation, then that's fine. But if they've got the room for cavity wall but they haven't had it filled, then that can have an impact on the RHI that you can claim on a heat pump basis. So something basic, but something worth looking at and certainly asking before you go out. And when you get to site, the first things you want to be looking at is the age of the property and also the different building methods that have been used in it for us to understand the actual fabrics of the property. So is it a detached brick, cavity brick property? Is it solid stone? Has it got an extension put on the side of it? Are we looking at single glazing, double glazing? So various different factors, but this video should hopefully underline the main issues that you might come across and educate you the best way to complete the survey. Brilliant, so let's go and do our survey. So we're here at the survey location and Blanche is gonna tell us a little bit about the property before we go in and get started. So before we even enter the property, get a photo of the outside and start noting down the construction methods that you can see. The particular property is a 1930 solid brick. We've also got an extension on the south elevation of the property which was built in the 80s. So straight away I've got solid brick, no insulation, straight to an extension with a small filled cavity wall. Always ask the customer, if in doubt, write it down and we'll look into it. Now let's take a step in and we'll start our survey. Okay, so now we're inside the house. The first thing I want to do is have a look at the existing heat source. So in this case, I've got an original floor standard Grand All 5 boiler. I want to take a photo of that so I can upload it with my survey and also I want to note it on my floor plans. Take a picture of any pipe work coming off the back of the unit, specifically any pumps or any electrics that you might see. In this case, all I can see is my flow and return pipe work going up into the roof void here. In this scenario, it's only in 22mm. And depending on what system we're going to be installing, chances are this will be upgraded to 28 Next, we'll take a look upstairs and see what room we've got to play with in terms of cylinder for location and what pipe work we have to play with. So here we are upstairs in the property. And in this case, we do have a cylinder. Um, I want to take a picture of this straight away and also I want to note down where it is on my plans and I want to get dimensions for how much room we have here for potential new cylinder to be put in. So that includes width of the total area, width of any door access, the depth and what height we have to play with for potential new equipment that needs to be put in. Here we've got a traditional lagged 
vented 3618 copper cylinder. We can see our pump and we can see our freeway valve. Get an image of this, also any few spurs that might be in here. Also I want to get noted down what size pipe work I have coming to this cylinder. We've seen it downstairs already, but here it is again. We've only got 22 more connection feed coming up to this. And if we're going down a heat pump route, whatever cylinder goes in here that's heat pump related is going to require a 28 mil firm return coming from our heat source and up to our buffer. So here we are in one of the spare guest rooms. We've already got noted down our floor plans, so we've got our individual room by room layout. So now we can start taking room measurements. When you come into the room, the first thing you want to do is check the height, note it down on your plans, then your width, and then your length. Once you've got that detail, you want to note the size of the window, so again, width and length, the type of the window, single paneled, double paneled, if in doubt, take a picture, and also your radiator. So as before, length and height of your radiator, type of radiator, a photo if in doubt, and what available wall space we have to play with. Once we've done this on an individual room by room basis, we can then start putting the information together as to what heat loss we're gonna have on this property. So here we are up in the bathroom. I just wanna have a quick chat about the showers when you're doing your surveying. Always take a picture of what they might have in their bathrooms. What I'm trying to avoid is any pump systems. Here we've got a Mara Vista shower, a single cold inlet coming in. This is a non-pump shower, which means that I can easily transfer this over to a high pressure system. However, where there's pumps involved, it could cause complications. If in doubt, always write down the manufacturer and the model, and then they can check that in the back office before any install work takes place. On this particular property, what we've come across is a wood burner. And you're gonna find that in the individual houses that you go into. And this sometimes can present a problem, but it's important that we note it down on the survey. And what I'm looking for in this circumstance is any pipe work coming off the back of the unit, which means that it could be contributing towards the central heating system or the hot water system. In this instance, it isn't. It's just here to provide heat for this individual room. But what could potentially happen if you're going down the heat pump route and you do have an Argo or log burner contributing towards the central heating system, is that that system would be, have to be detached or we would end up metering the system and that would come at an extra cost in terms of equipment and installation and potentially will it have an impact on your RHI incentive. Take a photo of all the electricity main supply coming into the property. Oh, from this I want to be able to see if there's any free spurs available on the fuse board and at the same time and more importantly the size of the breaker. So this item here, which could be even 40 amp, 60 amp, 100 amp, in this circumstance it's 100 amp. Sometimes they could be too small, they might need upgrading, which is why it's really important to note that down on your notes. And again, where this is located on your plans, so we can mark out the cable run from potential outdoor unit back to our fuse boards. Take a note of their existing fuel supply that they've got in the property. One of the great advantages about this particular house is if they're going down the heat pump route then they can free up a bit of space in their garden by removing the existing oil tank. We'll always make a note of where it is regarding the relation of the property on the plans that you've drawn out and take a picture and have the conversation with the customer about who's going to be removing the system. Sometimes you might come across cal gas or flow gas can canisters. In this particular instance, they are connected into the property because they have a flow gas supplied hob for their cooking. Sometimes you'll come across properties of which they rely upon cali gas or flow gas for their central heating and hot water. Again, this is a more older, more expensive way of heating the property. Um, so going down the heat pump route is going to be very advantageous for them. So we're looking to find a like suitable location for our outdoor unit for the heat pump to be located and with our oil boiler flue coming out the wall here it's always going to be more advantage from an installation point of view to have our heat pump unit located here because of the minimal run and connection and flare return pipe work going back into the house however because in this particular circumstance we're in quite a confined alleyway i'm always going to need 300 mil clearance off the back of the heat pump unit a further meter in front 
So a frying alleyway like this wouldn't always be suitable because we run the danger of colder air coming out the heat pump being recirculated through the back of the unit and as such reducing the efficiencies. So when trying to decide a suitable location to install your outdoor unit, it's always worth noting down one, maybe even two locations on your plans so that we can advise beyond there what's going to be the best practice. Whilst trying to identify the best location for our outdoor unit, you've also got to take into consideration the particular use of that property. And where we might have patioed areas, conservatories, places where they're going to spend a lot of time outdoors, these are always areas that you're going to want to avoid with your outdoor unit due to potential noise that can be heard from the system. Equally at the same time, we need to be making a note of how close our neighbouring properties are in terms of how far away their border is and how far away that property is so we can make sure that we comply with MCSO2 open noise regulation. That concludes the end of our survey and tutorial for today. Remember, if in doubt, always take the picture, ask the question. Bubble Shop is always here to help out. We're only ever either a phone call or an email away. Don't forget to give us a call or drop us an email for your survey and forms. And you're more than welcome to come along to one of our next classes. And to take it to that next stage from collecting your survey information to doing a full thorough heat loss via the MCS software, you're more than welcome to come along and find out how that side of it is done. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to check out the YouTube link below. Thank you.